Hi, welcome to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, a multimedia artist living in Prince George, BC, and today I want to show you how to paint an easy city scene. So let's get going. Today we have our flat panel boards, which are really fun and useful to work on. I like them because I can even put two paintings. This was a previous one. And then do another one on the back. And when you get bored in your home, you just pop it out of the frame and you flip it over and you put your new one on. So I have a series of colors, a variety of colors on my palette today. Blues, yellows, I have uh, over there, I have some reds and purples that I'll be picking up throughout this. So uh, they're really just fun to use uh, in this scene because cities, of course, are made up with lots of color. And uh, again, I'm doing my traditional white down here first because I know I need a sky in here and I want to keep my acrylic colors nice and bright uh, so that they don't darken because they do darken when they dry by 20%. So I like to start with some, uh, some lights underneath. Once you get a little bit of the white on, uh, I'm not too worried about the corners with the white because you can vignette the whole scene. Then I'm gonna pop into, oh, we'll go into some cobalt blue here. Put a little bit of blue, real loose strokes here and there. And your skies are interesting. You can do, you know, totally horizontal strokes with this. You, you can keep it nice and loose. Uh, it's really up to you. One thing I would say is just don't over blend it. You know, I got a little bit of ultramarine blue here. And um, I'm going to pop a little bit of uh, Quinn Red also up here. I have not cleaned my brush at all. I'm a very messy painter. Um, I'm just putting this red in because I want some atmosphere and typically, I don't know, it's just fun to have that little bit of color up in the sky. And, and scenes will often have a little bit of reflection up in the sky. I also know that the red with the blues <clears throat> will push them into the purples. And I like that for vignetting and different uh, different areas on my canvas. See, even some of my strokes have been straight up and down. So it's, uh, it's really a lovely little process to do. Just the sky itself. Some reds on that side. I'm gonna grab the other palette here and jump into blue again. Gonna hit it into those reds and get that a little darker. Okay, I've got some nice good transitions. And I'm just kind of using my brush very lightly, just feathering it a bit. And coming around the edges here. If you want to jump back into your whites and lighten it up again, you can. But you're just starting to build up some acrylic layers here. And if you don't have different colors and if you don't have different strokes, then you're really not going to have that nice layering effect that you're, the layering of colors that you see. I'm going to just drag some of that white over here. All these different decisions you make along the way. I'm going to bring this light down. Now I've double loaded my brush right into the white and the blue. And I'm going to bring it down here. I know my buildings are going to go on these sides, so I'm not too worried about those areas. But I do know that I'm going to have a bit of a central path here where a street will go in. And for that, I'm going to have to bring down the sky. the reds. And uh, uh, I like to place my buildings in kind of like mountains, so I would not necessarily have them exactly the same height on each side. So these are things that I'm thinking about as I work my uh, magic with the sky here. So I will consider where these are going to. And then if it, even if you wanted like 
I would not actually put yellow in at this point, even though I, I really think a nice sunshine in the background would be nice. Just because if that yellow hits the blue, then what you have is um, green. So you don't want to mix that together on the palette. I'm dipping into just a, a little bit of this Quinn Burnt Orange here. And the reason why I like it is because it's a little bit grunge. So these colors are very pastel-y. I want to just put a little bit of a grunge look in here. And I'm going to dip my brush into water just to kind of get a little dampness on it. Going ahead and getting the extra water off my brush because I don't want it to pool on my canvas. And I'm just using a damp brush to feather out that orange. And that just gives it a little bit of that dusks or the dusts from the city sort of settling up top here. Okay, so now we're gonna get into placing the buildings. And what I like to do with that is I get I get my palette knife, mostly because it's got these lovely straight edges on here. And I'm gonna think about some perspective. So a lot of people have struggle with perspective, but just start with one point and drag out from there and you'll be fine. So in my city scene, I am thinking that I want the street to kind of come over here. So I'm also being cognizant not to stop the street at the corner. Maybe there's a little bit of a, a walk, a, a sidewalk here. So I'm gonna pull that down a little bit. These are just my guides for now. And all I do is just hit the, the edge of that palette knife into my paint. And I'm gonna say, we'll come down this way here. I only cranked my arm that way because it was easier for getting that paint off. And we'll think about, think about it coming off this way here. Okay, that's a good enough line for me to see. And now I'm just gonna go up and I'm, I'm following this line over to the center. So I'm trying to keep this whole thing sort of off center here. We're gonna have more buildings here. The reason why I don't wanna go directly right in the center in the end is because we want some aesthetically pleasing looks here. So if I keep the city with the, the street about two thirds here and then I run the buildings up tall here, then that'll be good aesthetics. So I'm gonna think about having high buildings here and maybe just slightly lower buildings here and you're going to run that up like here so you kind of want this is your sort of your perspective line if we're doing a one point perspective so we've got those drafted up and now I'm going to just take a, a good spin into my black and my purple so I've got purple also now on the back of my palette knife here. And I just wanna cut in a little bit here and then bring some of this down. And don't do that, don't drop your palette knife. Cause then you'll get paint where paint doesn't belong. Okay, this is gonna go in real loose again. And then we'll go ahead and we'll fix it up later. So I've got some of these lines coming down at an angle, but building tops are not necessarily at angles. So they some will be that rate of horizontal and then down, but you kind of still need to keep the perspective going this way. And some buildings would even come up higher than others. So if you just use your palette knife, cause it's a nice straight edge, you can run these in. I'm gonna switch to grab my other palette to dump into some of the blues here. So pulling that over and getting that on my knife. Why am I doing that? Because it's there's lots of different colors in cities and it's important to throw them down. I 
Now I am going to be mindful, this is where my lines are for that sidewalk, so I'm just being careful about that. I want to follow that line there. Grabbing some more blue. Grab some more purple and black. I've got that down here beside me. And then what I think about is where's some of the... So as I come down, I'm also running some strokes this way because we have overhangs on buildings. We have windows in buildings and I'm just trying to put a little texture into this. And this is still all just very loose guide work that we're doing right now, but you'll watch it'll build up and uh, just have confidence in the process. It's funny too when you put in some of these marks because sometimes your eyes start seeing things, right? Like these are all just lines and they're all just a little bit of paint here and there. But your brain, because of the structure when it all comes together, will tell you that that is a building. Hey, so I'm going to go over to the other side. Now I've gone really dark here. This is more my shadow side. So I will use some black in this side, but mostly I want blues. Mostly I want purples. And I'm going to go ahead and take some green just to mix up the color. I've got a little bit of... Uh, little bit of yellow ochre on my palette. It's going to make a kind of a brown color, but that's okay. I just want it to not be the dark that the black is. There's my purple going in. So now I've mixed up kind of a really nice color there. Dark green almost. doesn't really matter too much because you're going to be adding on top. Okay, so I've started this down this high, so I really want to have these this side a little bit higher, right? Like our mountains. And maybe this building is considerably, you know, longer. So I'm gonna be mindful with the stroke there. Cut that up this way. A little bit of a diagonal there. And following that line. Cutting down with my knife. Now I'm just loading up with all of these colors on the back, nice and thick. Now the other fun thing that you can do is you can actually take a damp brush later. We can throw in some foam uh, buildings in the back, very faint, and we might do that as this develops. But for now, let's just get this in. This painting is a really fun painting. It's definitely one of my more popular paintings. When I, I've sold quite a few of these ones in particular. And I really like doing them. They're really interesting. They're kind of an abstract sort of city look, but uh, still, I mean, you know what it is. And that's kind of important, I think. Like, I love abstract, and you just don't know. You have your eyes carry you through uh, painting, but it's nice to kind of have something that you recognize. I don't know, maybe my preference. I also really like landscapes, too. Like, that would be, I'm a landscape person. But there is something fun about a city scene. And I'm just going to use the tip of my knife down here. Bring some of this up to hide that line. And right, got to remember all buildings are not the same, so I'm going to some have little tops to them. This one might have a little bit of a balcony up here. I'll pretend that that's what that is for now. And you can use your blade of your knife to kind of push in and pull back to the the, car, the board here, the canvas panel. And it's, it's called a scraffito, which is basically scratching into the board, leaving little marks, right, like this. And that, that's pretty fun and useful for buildings. 
I like this here with that color, but I'm gonna add a little purple just to, just to off-center it. So keep, you know, these are of course man-made objects. They're not gonna be organic like plants. So just consider that when you are putting this together for yourself because you want straight lines, you want straight edges, and you want shapes, man-made shapes. I'm just gonna get over here. Some of these buildings are looking a little sideways to me. So you've gotta go straight on to kind of figure them out. Okay. Anyway, we'll fix that up in a bit. Okay, we're gonna get into the, the pavement here. And for that, I'm using black and purple. And again, these strokes need to come this way. So always move in the shape of your sidewalk or your street. I wouldn't go necessarily like water and do it this way just because you want those strokes to lead the eye around. So push that. And if you find that that's getting hard, another good tip is to go ahead and turn your canvas right upside down and then pick up your palette knife again and then start pulling in. So it's certainly easier when you would kind of adjust these things that way. And faster too. Okay, gonna get some of the burnt orange in here. I like it a lot because it sort of is the sort of lights of the vehicles that may reflect here and there. Get into some more black and come up here. I don't use black a lot in my artwork. I typically, I would like to uh, mix up the darks, but when it comes to a city scene, there is something to be said about using black. And some people would argue that I should use gray for this street scene, but I find that gray is just too dull. It's not, uh, it washes out and you can't see it really good. Um, and this is sort of my painting. This is my, my abstract version of a, of a city. So I will do what feels good to me. And I think that's important in painting to just pick up your, pick up your tools and just go for it. You know, your people don't typically, they don't know where to start. The, the first way to start is just to put some paint on your canvas because it can lead to the next thing that you do and you just sort of let it tell you how it's going. I'm gonna actually take some of this burnt orange here and we'll put it in a few of those building bits now. So you also wanna start echoing colors around your, around your city scene. And I, I used to do with just a few colors, but I find that city scenes can really take a lot of colors, provided you put them in all different places around your city scene. Maybe a little there too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust some of these spots. I think it should be a little darker there. I'll be working light on here. I'll be putting in some light, white lines to indicate the path of the traffic. And now we will flip it again. Okay, so not too bad, right? So you certainly see a street here. I'd like to have the sidewalk come in here. I'll run the sidewalk in here. That'll shim up the street. Um, let's go ahead and put some more color into our buildings. So now I'm gonna think about uh, adding little pops and lights to this. I really like red and sometimes blue. Definitely blue for windows is a good one. Um, and you know, I've even done scenes where it's very kind of apocalyptic. So it's, uh, I'll just throw a little bit of color here and there. Again, this is all to do with just adding different colors in. Add some of that red over here too. 
before I start running some structure. Now, interesting enough, so far all we have really used on this has been um, a one inch brush, flat brush for up in the sky. Rest has been done with a, a palette knife. And palette knives are great because they're a lot like a, that much, they're a lot like a butter knife. So just think of them as buttering toast. One time I did a, a scene with the city and it turned out really apocalyptic because I went really yellow and orange on it. And so I've, it's, it's interesting to see, but also I, I thought it was a little bit chaotic. So now what I'm gonna do is grab a brush and I'm gonna get a little bit more of the black paint here. Probably some more of the purple too. This is really, really taking a lot of paint and it'll look great when there's layers of paint. I love, I love thick, thick paint on canvases. It feels more rich, like it's, I don't know. You see all the brush strokes and really nice, uh, nice way to look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my smaller brush here and we're gonna start pulling some just making some of the buildings stand out a bit more. So for example, maybe we have like a little restaurant down here. So that restaurant needs like a, <clears throat> it needs a bit of a sign, right? So we're gonna throw in a little banner over here. Now I'm being mindful to keep my strokes the same way, right? On that one point perspective that we're working with. And then maybe I'll put some little marks down here. None of this has to be really perfect. We're gonna throw some blues down and cover a lot of it up. Okay. Now I'm using a filbert brush. It's a very small filbert brush. And what's fun with the filbert brush is it does use like interesting little shapes for windows that are very, very like Italian, very, rounded right so if i want to give the impression that i have a bit of a pillar here on this building then what i will do is i will just sort of darken down in these few spots and now we've got sort of pillars in this side here and then over here if i want i can just put in some darkness underneath this part here makes it look like it's more of a ledge and you just sort of start seeing things in your paintings so I would just say, make sure you got some caves going on. Make sure you have, you know, some little window spots. Make sure they're big enough. Make sure they're in line, right? So I would consider making sure that these are all sort of in line. Go faint, add more color to it. I'm gonna add some purple right now because I really am thinking this building here, I really want to stand out a bit more. Like, I feel like this building should come forward. So I'm gonna just run some color in to help define that. And then I'm gonna use dark to inset it. Okay, so I want this face of the building light. And I'm gonna pop in dark right beside here, like it's a little alleyway between these buildings. Now you can take all the time in the world to do these things. We're just gonna crank this out in an hour. That'll get you started making your version. And then we'll have these buildings sort of in the background a little bit over here. I feel like we should probably put some some stacks over here and the reason why I say that is because let's say this building is you know a little bit more like the Empire State Building top so it's got a different top to it and this building here I'm gonna say is a part of that stack here Just gonna get under here make that more of a ledge And this guy here, he's really fading off into the distance. But this one here, I would put a little blue in. And the reason why we do that is because we do want some, some 
maybe this is like a sky rise and it has you know uh, lots of windows so I'm gonna put some blue in this way and this way and I'll get to adding some whites and stuff on there so you gotta get color on there you gotta add your darks and then you gotta add your lights I'm also gonna put some purple down here now because I'm gonna say that this is a sidewalk so I want just a little bit different color than the black and the red there. And this one too. More of a sidewalk there. I really like this little overhang here that's happening. But uh, we'll get into some of that window bit here in a sec. Maybe off in the distance, this just goes away. Or if you want to put in some buildings, oh, like we were talking about with our brushes, you could put them like over off in the distance, but I would do them a little lower and definitely not in black. So you just want to give the illusion that they're over here and you want to keep them fairly, you know, straight, right? So keep them straight. Just fade them out a bit because obviously we're going into a city it's gonna have buildings and different things everywhere so be loose with this and just scrub it out a bit so these are fairly faint and that's what's good about that let me just throw something in here get some more purple on my brush purple's a great color for throwing things in the background so is blue like if you go and look at mountains off in the distance, they'll typically look like they're blue. I'm getting a little crazy with my brush here. Getting some fun strokes everywhere. Oh, there's a big building there. And that's not a straight edge. So that's where the palette knife really helps you is running straighter edges in. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to the palette knife because now what we wanna do is we wanna consider our windows and um, I'm actually gonna get a smaller palette knife because I'm gonna do some smaller windows. So I have this just little diamond shaped one now and I'm gonna go into the blue because blue is a good window color and I'm gonna also get some white and I'm just really double loading this, throwing some cobalt in. So I've got ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, <clears throat> and some white. And we're gonna start considering where some of these windows will be. Those in. See the darker the blue and the more, um, The more varied you have it on your palette knife, the better your windows will be. And I will just put these in here real quick. And then what you wanna do is you wanna push and you wanna scrape. Okay, so get your paint in, push and scrape. And then we'll go up into the overhang here and I'll bring some of that down. I think maybe I'm gonna add green here. We haven't added green into this and I'm gonna say that that's gonna be green overhang. So this time when I'm doing the overhang bit, I'm coming out at the side and I'm just doing it so that it comes at a diagonal. And I wanna get it kind of straight up top and then straight over. We'll put a little green down here too, because that's sort of fun. And because I've got green there, I should put some green around the other areas. Once you put green beside the red too, what you end up with is a complementary color scheme and it, both of those colors end up popping. And that's kind of important for your painting. Okay, if you want to put a little dark into this, you can. You find that it's kind of losing its luster there. 
pan. I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to do lots of blue. Now this side's darker, so I'm really going to be careful about how I do this. So this was angled in this way, so we have to have this sort of coming in too, like that. Try and keep it straight. This is again like another typical overhang. Maybe something over here, yeah, a little stuff over there. So these shapes start kind of giving you a little bit more to think about in your painting. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and tap and scrape some other paint around here. It's all about putting it down, taking it off and sort of making some straight edges with it. Okay, I'm uh, just going to let this dry a little bit so that we can keep layering this up. I'm going to jump into the street again and for that I am going to use white. And I'm also going to mix a little bit of the, uh, actually I'm going to get this really nice Azo Yellow on here. Azo Yellow is a very kind of a goldeny looking paint, so it's really interesting on canvases. And this is a thick, thick one. So it's got a gold flavor to it. And it's very, very thick. Um, I like using it for this type of work because I know that it's going to give me some lift, but it's also going to handle uh, going over top of black. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to get some white in there too. Just boost that yellow, make it a little brighter, a little saucier. And it's okay if it's not fully mixed. This is, you know, ish, ish, half 50, 50 ish. <laughs> And now what we're going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this is the center line. I'm going to cut down here and reload and cut. Now it helps sometimes to roll your palette knife as the paint comes off of it. I should be actually using my larger palette knife for this, but we're going to try and get away with it. Just like that. I really, really love the contrast that this brings on the dark and it just gives it that off into the distance. Like look over here, your painting should be drawing the viewer's eye in and uh, yeah, just makes it a little better. This isn't the most perfect line, um, but we're going to say, we're going to be kind to ourselves today and say, you know what? I'm not a ruler. Okay. I'm going to also pop this yellow in a few spots here. So again, when you put things around, you need to start adding them into other areas. Uh, I like to skim this time because it is a light color. So just run some skims in here, like give it the impression that maybe there's some, some lights going on up here. Now, another good way to put lights in is actually with a really big toilet brush. Don't use the one right out of your bathroom, but go get a new one. And you can roll that brush through these paints and the bristles are very nice to just roll right across your uh, your canvas. So I'm going to use a few different um, lines now. So I will typically do some longer ones, maybe some few horizontal ones and then again some more skimming. And definitely over here as it fades off into the distance and it appears to get lighter. Like, okay, we're just gonna mirage that right out over there. That's a good word for art. Make a mirage. That was too much right there. Maybe, we'll see. Yeah, definitely too much. So this might happen to you too. Just uh, move it around a bit. If you've got it in that spot, maybe add it to another spot. And then perhaps we'll put some more color over top of this because these are too, too obvious. These would be better in a city, like a night scene for a city. We're still in the kind of daytime-ish with some real bold cities. 
stuff here. There should be a helipad up there. We'll pretend. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the sidewalk now using the, uh, the blue, the white, maybe a touch. Uh, it's not too bad. So this is turning out to be a little bit more gray and I just want some definition because obviously there would be people walking here and we just want a little bit of a neutral to throw in here. Behold, a sidewalk. Very abstract sidewalk. Scrape it out. I missed a few spots there, but that's okay. Run that one too. And what I'm gonna do to fix this is put my finger in the black paint, some of the colors, and I'm just gonna cut along the edge here. This one went too high. And we're gonna switch over to our other little brush again, just because I think I can use this roundness of the Felbert brush to kind of get in and, and give us a little bit of an edge, some more of an edge here on this uh, sidewalk. So just touching the bottom there and just straightening that out. I also really like taking that color a little bit into the, the road there. Okay, same over here. Just gonna go ahead and get it a little wet so I can dampen the paint and adjust it there. So a damp brush is really useful to just sort of fix errors, erase a little bit. The problem is that you can tear back right to the canvas and you will lose some of the work that you've done. So just be mindful of that. And I wanna keep this city thing coming down here. So I just want this side to fix, fix this up a bit. Topper here. This will be a little bit maybe of a restaurant. Maybe that's like a door to the restaurant. It's all this, just your world. This is your world, and you can just put in whatever you want. Won't worry too much about that side. When it goes into a frame, it'll hide most of that, anyways. Okay, and I'm just gonna darken this up a bit here because remember I said it was a little too much and the solution to that is just to put dark on top and what's interesting when you put dark on top of light is you start having even more contrast and it really kind of pops things Okay, that's not bad. Okay, we're gonna say that some of this is some signs too now, so we need to think about not just like our overhangs that we've been building up here, but uh, see this would be a nice little addition to that. Maybe we'll put a little more green on here just to funny you can just tip, pick away at this for the, forever but going up and down the streets and making that dark underneath because maybe that's a just the window and but if we make it too dark underneath these are things that go through my mind I'm like I'm just gonna make that right dark right down to the street level but the problem is, is buildings have like weird brick and stucco and all these things that they would need to kind of keep it the texture down below on a painting. 
Okay, that's good enough for now. Give these signs. Okay, we're gonna do some signage. So for that, I'm just gonna use this little brush again, clean it off, and we're gonna pretend to put some words on here. We're gonna do that in white or yellow, or the mix of yellow and the white. So we might have a little sign up here. Just make these like squiggly lines. It doesn't have to really say anything in general. You don't have to be perfect about this. Maybe there's a little squiggle there. Maybe this is like, I don't know, Eddie's or something. And if you want, you can even use the back of your brush. So I've turned my brush around and I'm using the tip now to just add a few little tiny little splits and dots in here. And if you squiggle those around, they will make a sign too, see? Turn it and squiggle it out. Sprofito. Sprofito is fun. Okay, now I'm gonna get my longer palette knife. This is why artists are so messy, because they are using every part of their tool to make a painting, and then they turn around, they go and grab the tool again, and they get it all over themselves. So, now I'm gonna take the white, and I'm gonna start just adding some extra structure lines here. So there's some of that structure on the building. Maybe down here. If it's not in line, remember you got to keep everything in line with your with your uh, vanishing point there. I'm gonna put a few up here. Maybe one down here. Reload. This gets really tricky for the eyes when you're trying to just get that fine line. And I was using the opposite side of the palette knife there, so I'm just gonna adjust some of that. Try to keep them straight. I mean, you don't, it's not always gonna be perfect, but give that some structure. I'm gonna fix that one here. But let's go and jump around while we are working our way around here. If you find that you get a big blob, just go ahead and take the extra off on your plate and then just graffito it out. Just adding some more window air, window shuffling around here. Sorry, that didn't make sense at all. Just getting some more white to throw down on this window here to give it a little bit more of a gleam. This, um, I really like the texture here that I've built up. It almost looks like a rippled um, fabric. Uh, so I'm kind of interested by that. So I'm not gonna wipe it out. Uh, what I am gonna do though, is I'm going to grab my black and I'm going to try put in a little car and um, a lot of times cars are you know you think of them as being super hard but they're really not they're pretty much just a rectangle so if you can paint a rectangle you'll be fine and then we can put in a few people wandering the streets so for here I'm going to use my small little palette knife little diamond shaped one and um, I do want a window in it so I'm thinking okay I'm going to have the front end right about here my little front end of the car and then it will go back so another little shape going back and then I'm gonna pop this top here so there we go and it's just gonna head back it's almost like more of a and then we just put connect it all so now we're just connecting the shapes so do 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 and then cut in over there 
and down here. Now you can just make it bigger. Like I say, start small and then add some more to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm doing, so I'm gonna bring this up again. So I liked that and now I'm gonna make it bigger. And then cut down and then the box of the car this way and then over here. And it's okay if you have little shadows and stuff under here because it needs shadows anyways. So if you're just putting it in. So what I wanna point out to gain is these shapes here. So we're gonna have the front of the car, right? So that's this rectangle here. And then we kinda of have it shuffling off into the distance there. So it's almost a triangle going back that way. We have another sort of squarish quadrilateral shape there. This is gonna be the window. So I will go ahead and put some lights in there. I'm just graffitoing this in so that you can see, right? And then I have another quadrilateral shape there. And then this will just all kind of go down to the back and away. So it's really up to you. Now I can scrape some of that out if I don't want it that far. And then I will, from there, I will start adding some of the lights and stuff. So if we have a dark vehicle, which is kind of fun for the scene, then I'm going to scrape in and around, give it some wheels here. Put a wheel there. And another wheel back here. So it's just a little half circle shape that I'm shoving up into the car. Okay. Okay, now we need our lights. So grabbing the other palette because it's got my yellows. Gonna go with the uh, yellow and white here. Okay, these are the gonna be the headlights. Oop. Very just tap it very gentle because again we're working on wet paint here, and I've got very thick yellow to handle that. If it just goes down, this is drying out pretty good on me. Okay, yeah, get it here. Oh, that's a tricky one for the eyes. Okay, and then I'm going to take some more of this yellow because clearly this will, the, the, high, the high beams do shine out, right? So we're just going to scrape some of that out. And then we're going to go ahead and get some of that color and just Throw it up here, make it look like that's a window. Very faint, right? Like it's just a little bit of that yellow in a window makes a big difference on what it looks like. There, I'm gonna jump to my black again. Get my little filbert brush here. Now you can also use a round brush, a little pointy round brush. Um, I just happened to grab this one today because it's pretty utilitarian and it works great. So I'm gonna put this here little tire. Now the tires, you're going to hardly see them, right? So, especially from the side. So I just put some of it down and then I just give that car some shadowing underneath. And that's really all you need. Just gives it the impression that there's a car there. I'm going to fix that sidewalks there so that I can... Uh, it, it looks like the, this is sort of mashed in here and I just want to start adjusting the car a bit so it looks more. Actually, I can even bring this window down a bit so that the hood of the car is not super long looking. So these are all just little adjustments that you make and they work out. Okay, I'm gonna put some of that window here and drop that down there. Clean my brush off. And we're gonna give this one some little people quickly on the scene. So maybe they're just here and they're just walking down the street, minding their own business. 
up. They're going to be just little black heads with little uh, shapely bodies here. Very just silhouetted. And they will disappear as they... You know, that guy should have his leg out that way. Very, very whimsical. It's amazing how quickly this kind of a painting can kind of come together. And uh, yeah, it's simple, it's easy. You can go ahead and make all kinds of adjustments. You can throw in some more signs with your little round brush. You can, you know, opt for putting some more structural lines in for the verticals and whatnot. But um, that's all we're going to show you today in the hour that we have had. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off this time. I'm going to use red because it'll stand out on this palette. We'll go down here. There we are. So that's our city abstract scene for today. You have yourself an artful day.